Contact with nature has been shown to provide benefits to physical and mental well-being. We examined this topic in a previous episode when visiting St. Nick's Nature Reserve in York. Now, we've returned to St. Nick's to look at a specific technique aimed at improving well-being. This technique is known as ecotherapy. Let's find out more about it. Ecotherapy is an umbrella term that encompasses a huge range of activities that promote physical and mental well-being. These activities all share a common feature – contact with nature in a safe and structured manner. I spoke to the Ecotherapy Project Manager of St. Nick's, Kathy Sturges, to gain a more detailed explanation. So Ecotherapy Phil is the name given to a wide range of programs um, to improve both mental and physical well-being by getting outside and into nature. In its strictest sense, ecotherapy is about building a relationship with nature alongside more formal type of support, so things like CBT or an intensive mentoring program. The type of nature people experience depends on the type of ecotherapy. For example, in adventure therapy, it might be raging rivers, while in care farming, participants might work with agricultural animals and crops. But how does ecotherapy actually help? Ecotherapy improves mental health through decreasing feelings of depression and anxiety. It increases physical well-being through the promotion of exercise. Completing activities together in an ecotherapy session not only gives a sense of achievement, but provides new skills and decreases social isolation as participants meet new people and make new friends. And this isn't just wishful thinking. As always, let's look at some evidence. In 2013, the UK mental health charity MIND completed their five-year EcoMind scheme, which ran 130 ecotherapy projects. The effects of these projects on over 800 participants were analysed independently by the University of Essex. Participants showed statistically significant increases in measures of well-being and self-esteem. There were statistically significant decreases in total mood disturbance, and significant improvement was seen in scores of social engagement. I asked Kathy Sturgis what benefits of ecotherapy she has observed firsthand. So I've seen a number of benefits from people who regularly participate on the ecotherapy program here. Um, I've seen people grow stronger both physically and mentally from regularly engaging on the project. I've seen invaluable peer support within the groups, not to mention some lovely friendships developing and blossoming as well. Uh, ecotherapy also has the potential to provide benefits on a large scale. Mental health, still often a taboo subject, affects society as a whole. It is thought that one in four people in the UK experience mental health problems each year, and the estimated cost to the UK economy was £105 billion in 2009 to 10. Ecotherapy could offset some of the costs by being a relatively cheaper treatment compared with, say, antidepressants. It could also address indirect costs of mental health by helping those recovering from mental health issues back into employment and therefore the wonderful world of taxation. It is therefore worrying that the University of Essex study found a lack of understanding amongst medical professionals about using ecotherapy as a valid treatment in the face of lengthy waiting times for other interventions. So how can you get involved in ecotherapy? Be sure to visit the website of the charity Mind and the St. Nick's Ecotherapy page for activities on the reserve. If you do think you're being affected by a mental health issue, it's important to visit your local GP for professional medical advice. If you think ecotherapy might be right for you, mention it during your consultation. Finally, I should mention that ecotherapy requires the eco part as well as the therapy. And if ever there's a reason to conserve biodiversity, this is it. Until next time. <laughs>